So we're going to dive right into a process. We can do batch process, which is typically what, you know, you think of batch systems. You're dealing with liquids, powders, some sort of process like that in a batch manner. But it actually comes in different flavors too. But we're going to start out looking at just this batch process. And then we'll look at other types of procedures or, uh, you know, later on. So, so looking at this screen, um, we see that we have two premixes and they can take in four different ingredients. We have a mixer there. We can pump out or transfer from that premix over to some reactors. We have capability of heating and recirculating. So they each, these types of, of uh, units have the tasks that they can do, the building blocks that Jeff was talking about. So, Keep this in mind as we go forward because we're going to take a look at um, how, how all this is done. So if I go in and look at the batch recipe, uh, we can have multiple recipes and that's one of the benefits here. We can have multiple recipes that we set up. I happen to have two here. I'm going to go in and take a look at the first one here. And we can see that we have a, a unit procedure, some sort of procedure we're going to do at premix. You can see the premix there. This one over here is we're going to do a different unit procedure on our reactor. Okay. So to be able to see what that procedure is, and this is a little unique to our product, right in the same designer, no screen flips. We just expand that and there we are. We see the procedure in there. Now we can take this down to another level because the ISA 88 spec has operations that you can have in there. And in some cases, um, you can only put phases in these building blocks in the operation. We allowed to be able to put it into the unit procedure directly or the operation. So sometimes it's a little more straightforward to put it in the unit procedure if you still want to use operations and, and start capitalizing on, on uh, templates then you can have a operation temp templates as operations or as unit procedures. So, so here we see we're adding ingredient A and C at the same time. Then we proceed after that's done. Then we go down and we look at B and, and mixing. Uh, we have our expressions in here. The complete IntelliSense in here of what your different options are, what the parameters are, uh, and and so you don't have to know off the top of your head what the type, it kind of guides you through it a little bit. And uh, you can also refer to tags and script functions in here. So script function can return a value. You can then, you know, take that value and say if it's greater than a certain uh, other parameter or what have you. So pretty powerful expressions there. Then we go into our phases here, these building blocks, and we can access the parameters within there. Now there's actually a lot more parameters, but these are the ones that are allowed to be changed at the recipe level. We might have a lot of parameters that we can change during execution, but we don't clutter it up here in the recipe and defining the recipe with those. Um, and here we just got our set point amount that we're doing and, and some other options here. So that continues uh, like that. And then we have this synchronize here, which then synchronizes with this. You can have multiple synchronizations going on. I won't go into that in too much detail, but we have pretty powerful synchronization of, in this case, we're saying, are we ready to transfer? Yes, we're ready to transfer. Before we actually do the transfer, now let's allocate our reactor. So we did that reactor was free to do something else until we got to the point where we were ready to transfer. Um, this interface here is pretty powerful. You can you can scroll. It's all drag and drop. So if I wanted to add more steps, I could do so. Let me put that over in here. And and then I can set the parameters and I can connect stuff connect stuff up to it. Uh, I'm not doing very well at that. Oh, because I'm on the bottom side. There's only one output. You know, okay. If it was up here. I'm on on the system which okay anyhow you can drag between these um, so that is the recipe that we see for our process 
Now I have another one very similar, um, but different, different ingredients and such here. So we'll, we'll see a difference between two different recipes that we run here. I'm gonna go over to batch execution. I have a couple items in here already for those two recipes. They're idle currently. Um, if I go in and take a look at one of these, this is, is uh, where I can set, if I have parameters for the batch, which is very common because it could get the parameters down from ERP system, whatever, sure. they end up uh, in here for the batch when they end up into this queue. And you also have your scale and, and all those kinds of things. We can also set the unit that we want to run on. So if we know what unit we want to run this batch on, we can specify it here. We have our two premixes. We have our two reactors. If I leave them blank, it will auto allocate. And there's different conditions for the allocation and such. So I'm going to take those two and I'm going to both start at the same time. Jeff showed that diagram and had the command. We're going to be sending start commands down, basically. So now we see they're running. I'm going to go over to batch process. And we see we have ingredient D here, but we have ingredient A and C here. So we're running those two different recipes. Here we're showing the, um, the batch ID number, and we haven't allocated the reactors yet. We haven't hit that synchronize yet. So this will continue, and we can take a look at it in different ways. We can go up here to batch monitor and select one of them and actually see it running. And the conditions, I can click on uh, here and see whether it's true or false. I can go in and click on steps here and see all the parameters. I can also here change it into manual mode or semi-automatic mode, okay. re-execute steps or execute steps that haven't run yet. All that I can do from here. We also have other components that are more geared towards an operator. So they don't have to understand FCC charts or PFC charts to, to be able to do it. Okay. Um, so we have that flexibility to, to, to do all those things. If I go back to my batch process here, you can see the transfers have both started and we allocated the reactor and now it's going down into that reactor. Um, now that's great. You're being able to control this. This, you're probably using a PLC. Not all those phases have to go to the PLC. So in this batch process, I might have some manual steps or you know, sure. add ingredient manually and different things like that. Fully support all that. This screen here that we see is actually just ignition components. These are some of the symbols that are in ignition. And we have the piping here. It's not using the new cool piping feature but sure. that they have in ignition now. Um, but we'll go back and update this <laughs> to, to do that. And um, and it's all using just take binding and expressions here. So it's it's pretty darn uh, easy to, to set up. We expose a bunch of tags and then you can refer to those tags. Uh, the other thing that's extremely important is that, okay, we've got the control of this, but what about the details of it? People mm -hmm. like recording those details. So we have um, what's called an EBR. And you can export that EBR out. So electronic batch record, I'm sorry. Sure. I use that term so frequently, I forget. Maybe, maybe everybody doesn't know what that means. But in this case, you know, we can return it in Python and Python objects, and you can manipulate it. You can convert that to JSON, which is one line of code, does that. And this is the output from that. But this also shows up in the reporting and we have on our roadmap to create a component that's very user-friendly to be able to step through the, um, the that batch and what actually happened. So here we have the steps, we have got the start, we've got the unit procedure, and we can just keep drilling down. And if we wanted to see equipment phase or the parameters for a particular phase, like an add ingredient A, then I can come down here and I see, oh, well, this is the first time I execute it. Execute counts one. Here's the timestamp. Uh, here's the state. It was idle. And just every parameter as it changes in a timestamp. And if I ran 
uh, add ingredient A multiple times, so I put it in manual and I ran it again, or my recipe ran it multiple times, mm -hmm. I would see a separate section in here for each time that it ran oh. with those chronological details of all the parameters. For it. So we have basically 100% recording of what exactly happened. Um, and um, so very powerful tool and is commonly needed in batch processing, especially in the regulated industries. So. Stay connected by following us on social media and subscribing to our weekly news feed and monthly podcast. Um, but thanks so much, Tom, Jeff, a great presentation. Um, really excited to see uh, how customers use this to revolutionize their processes. And so um, with that, we'll wrap up for today. Thank you. Thank everyone. you, everyone. Yeah, take care. Bye.